So what makes Rich Dad Poor Dad different is that, as you know, my poor dad was a PhD in education. But what does school teach you about money? Did you learn anything about money at school? Most people don't. So that's why I had my rich dad, who was my best friend's father, and he was teaching me what the rich teach me. So look, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be poor, I hate to say this, you can go to school, but you still won't learn anything about money. And education is more important today, but what do you learn about money? Most kids not going to school, they're coming out of school deeply in debt with student loans, still not learning anything about money. Look at the middle class. You know, they may have high paying jobs, but the jobs are, are going away. The first thing is, is OPM, other people's money, right? So let's look at this from a big picture point of view, okay? Trillions of dollars move hands every day throughout the stock market, throughout bank loans, um, throughout personal loans, car purchases, retail purchases, so on and so forth. The reason I'm starting with that is, is you have to get the concept in your brain that the money is out there, okay? And other people who have money, they want to find good investments, but they don't want to put the work into finding the deal. So once you learn how to find the deal and you get a good deal and the numbers make sense and you can give somebody a return on their investment and that return, it, it would be foolish to get into what a good return would be because each deal is in a case-by-case -case basis. They don't, there's, there's not a, a magic number where you have to hit X percent every time. So don't fall into that trap. But you have to get a good return. So once you set that return up, you'd be quite surprised once you start within your network, your family, your friends, and so on and so forth, how much other people's money is out there that is looking for a good deal where they don't have to do a lot of work for it, they get a return on it, and they also own part of a physical asset, that physical asset being the property you've purchased. These are things that a lot of people actually get scared of, and I find it interesting because actually that's the most exciting part. That's where you have to focus on your financial education. You have to understand what is other people's money mean and how do you present that good deal you see the beauty about real estate is you learn to use debt to get rich I'll give you another tip if you're gonna be rich you have to learn to use debt it's called other people's money so when I hear poor people say to me I don't have any money I said because you're an idiot that's why you're not supposed to use your money. You're supposed to use other people's money. But that's it. I don't want to do that. And so they stay poor. When we talk about considerations, the first one is you got to look at the top line of the deal. You got to make sure your numbers roll out and make sense. And in those numbers, you have to make sure you're, con you're considering things such as taxes. Property taxes won't go away. You have to consider things such as a percentage of potential loss from non-rental, so empty, right, or vacancies. That's a big one. Uh, the next one would be your maintenance issues, anything that's going to happen from air conditioners to toilets to plumbing to so on and so forth. Uh, the other one would be um, basic type of updates that you have to do when a tenant moves in and out. So for example, anything from the cleaning of the carpet to the replacement of the carpet to dishwasher, appliances, things of that nature. And then the next level is when you start getting into the back to the top of the line in terms of that mortgage payment, the interest rate, how long is the note going to be carried. And you also have to include a percentage if you're going to, if you're not going to manage the property yourself, then you have to have some feel or some concrete number to use that you're going to pay a property manager that's going to take care of all these issues that could pop up. In 1997, when I released Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that book caused a bit of an upset because I said, your house is not an asset. So in today's world, if you want to be rich, you have to know this between assets versus liabilities. One of the reasons so many people are struggling financially today is simply because they're calling their liabilities assets, such as your house is not an asset, your car is not an asset, and things like that. So very simply, when I was a young boy, my rich dad taught me, he says, you have to understand a financial statement. So this is an income statement, this is a balance sheet. Now this is overly simplified. He says, what creates something to be an asset is very simply assets 
cash flow money into your pocket. And a liability takes money from your pocket. So for most people, their houses are not assets or liabilities because every month it takes money to live in that house. Even those who say, well, I don't have any debt on my house, I've paid it off. Look, you still have insurance, you still have upkeep, you still have maintenance. Now, we don't want to be caught into the space of being too afraid to make a mistake. That, that we have to be really careful of because eventually you're going to have to sign on the dotted line, as they say. But I, I just want to repeat, you have to take action. You, you can only do so many things and learn so many things before you take it and you apply it and you learn what the actual world is really like. So uh, I'm going to say it just one more time. Doing the real thing is where you will really learn